I need the electrolyte. Hi, welcome to Gab and Gabs, and we're gonna do a book rant. Let's go. Hey, my name is Gabby, and this is our third video together. So we're trying to get into a rhythm. We're trying to decide whether or not, you know, you vibe with me, you're feeling me, you're feeling my book taste, and if not, no big deal. If I'm entertaining for you, great. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm just, we're doing this. We're doing this. We're doing it, and we're doing it, and we're doing it well. Oh my god, I hate myself. Okay, let's continue. As you can see, we have yet again another background scenario. We've been doing my bed, and although I love my bed, and it's a place of zen, a place of reading, a place of tranquility, a place of snoozing, um, not the best background, honestly. I think I had some really good advice from my friend, um, Little Phoenix, I'm going to link her in the bio. She's actually a film major, so she's actually been really helpful in giving me some really good tips about, uh, I don't know what I should be doing, so I'm trying to take her advice. I think she's going to be proud of me because literally no Shake Cam 2019. Although I kind of missed a shake, to be honest. I kind of like a little bit of a, a little bit of shaking scenario. Anyway, yes, we're doing a book rant because... I promised you in video one that that's what we were going to do. So I'll link that video in the bio if you want to watch it because I don't know how to like link it up here because yet again, video three. I saw the title so you already know the book I'm doing it on. Um, you may be familiar with the book, you may not. You may have watched the movie, you may have heard of it. But the book we're talking about is Brooklyn. ASMR. ASMR. Brooklyn by Calm. You guys, I'm butchering this. Calm Toyman. C-O-L-M. And then T. Asente over the O. I B. Asente over the I. N. Pretty sure he's Irish, but yet again, don't quote me. I have no idea. I'm just assuming. But, um... Here's the cut! I obviously didn't like it or else I wouldn't be doing a book rant on it. Let me preface by saying I love the film. And the film is the reason why I picked up the book. If you're unfamiliar with what this book slash the movie is about, it's about a woman named Eilish, like Billie Eilish. And she lives in Ireland with her mom and her sister. And she really has kind of no life going on for her in Ireland. She gets the opportunity to go to America to make a better life for herself. And this is in the 1950s. Uh, so when immigration was really uh, kind of parallel to what's going on now, but it's, uh, you know, everyone was immigrating to New York, and so she immigrates to Brooklyn, and she tries to start a life for herself there, falls in love, but then tragedy strikes, and she is forced to go back to Ireland, and it's kind of like this pull between two different worlds. <laughs> um, so if you don't want to be spoiled, I would not watch this video at all. Avoid it. So, I completely forgot that I don't like the last fourth of the movie. It had been a couple years since I had watched the film, and I forgot that when I used to watch the movie back in the day, I would stop the film when she goes back to Ireland. I would completely stop it. I would just stop the film and pretend that was, that was it, wrapped up, we're done. I literally would do it. I've done that with some films. I'm just known to do that. And so when I started reading in the last, literally it's called part four in the book, I was like, oh, I remember. And I was like, crap, because, <laughs> whoo, the last, I mean, a lot of, I'm not going to lie to you. There's other parts of this book that are very frustrating to read. But the last fourth just really just like, you know, like a, you know, that. <laughs> so, okay. Spoiler alert. So, in the book, Eilish uh, actually works at a department store called Bertolli's. Um, and she's going to night school to become an accountant. Uh, she's living with a bunch of Irish immigrants in a boarding house. But she falls in love with this boy named Tony whose family is from Italy, and he's the first generation out. Uh, they fall in love, 
And in the movie, it's just so sweet and endearing, and you just really fall for these characters, and the way they're acted is amazing. In the book, it doesn't read that way. In the book, it just seems like Tony is really like a poppy dog, and like Eilish isn't sure if she really does like Tony, but she's like going along with it because she's happy with Tony. It, and I think eventually there grows up, but she just, in this book, Eilish is the most frustrating character I have read in a very long time because she is so passive. And I mean passive. She doesn't take responsibility for anything she does, and it's like she, like, it's like a damn fart in the wind. I'm sorry to say, but a damn fart in the wind, you know? Oh, like, someone suggests you should start dating. Oh, I guess I'll date Tony. And oh, like, you know, Tony thinks I should get married to him. Yeah, I guess I will. Like, oh, <laughs> I'm getting here just thinking about it, because she just takes no responsibility. Like... Okay, so how they get married is that her sister dies. Her sister dies in Ireland, and unfortunately, it you know, obviously she, her, she was the closest to her sister. She only told her sister that she was dating Tony. She doesn't tell her best friend in Ireland, doesn't tell her mother, only tells her sister Rose. So it's kind of, she feels this close mom, but she's not able to go back right away to Ireland. But eventually she does go back. And her mom is also, like, very frustrating. I can kind of understand because her daughter just died and she needs a companion. She's a widow. Her sons are in England um, having their own life. So she's kind of like, well, you know, here's Eilish. She should be here with me. And she kind of manipulates it where she kind of forces her daughter to stay longer than intended. She was only going to stay in Ireland for two weeks, but, like, her mom's like, you should stay behind for your best friend's wedding. And she's like, I have a job. I've, she doesn't tell, oh, first of all, she doesn't tell anyone that she's married or with Tony when she goes back to Ireland. She doesn't tell her best friend, doesn't tell her mom, doesn't tell a soul um, about um, her marriage, which is odd. She doesn't really give a reason. She's just like, well, I'm going to go home anyway. Like, it's not a big deal. Like, my mom's grieving. I don't think she could handle it. Uh, but then, you know, like her mom manipulates her to stay for this, her friend's wedding. She does. And her friend obviously thinks she's single. She's just trying to hook a sister up. And it's like, hey, like, my husband has a best friend that just gotten broken up with. A.K.A. you want to be a rebound? <laughs> and she's like, uh. And she's like, I'll talk with him. But, like, you know, Tony, you know. But then she stops writing to Tony, um, you know, and then all of a sudden she's hanging out more with this guy. I forget the second guy's name, so who cares about the other guy? The other guy's a sucker, okay? He honestly just was, like, sad that he got broken up with, and he's like, ooh, like, like Eilish, honestly, if I'm gonna, honestly, if I'm being honest, I'm being honest with you. I would skim through a lot of their dialogue because in the movie it's cringe enough. I don't need to continue reading it because I already know what it is. Pretty much, they go dancing one night and, like, what do you do? You forget about your husband and you make out with the guy in the car. And your excuse, like, I don't know. He's just so nice and he's just so nice. I'm like, I feel bad if I, like, don't give in. Like, you gotta get a fart in the wind. Like, it just is insane to me that she doesn't take any responsibility. She don't condone cheating at all. So reading any cheating storyline to me, this is me saying no. This is me saying no. No, I wish there was a sound effect that I could say no, just no. It's just very frustrating to me because she doesn't make responsibility for it. She's just like, well, like, I don't want to be mean. I don't want to be mean and like, and then she like, like, she like goes out of her way to like make people know. She goes to the wedding with this guy, like her, her best friend's wedding. She even at like her friend's wedding is thinking like, hey, like, Maybe I can tell him and, like, I can divorce Tony because I don't think I really love Tony. You think? You think? Because love isn't cheating on someone. Like, that's no... Res I need to, like, stop yelling because there's no point. This she can't hear me. She can't hear me. She's just an actress either. She's not even the character, but she can't hear me. 
because she's just but then the kicker you want to know how everything gets resolved do you want to know how everything gets resolved do you because I wanted to know I wanted to know is there going to be any consequences what will happen this is a short book mind you this is a this book also gives like a preview to his other book did I read the preview no because why would I after a rant review I'm not going I'm not doing this again I'm not doing this with another book the only reason she tells anyone about Tony is because she got found out her old boss at the grocery store actually knows her landlady and her landlady let it slip that she got married to Tony because her marrying Tony was even a secret in America. Tony didn't tell his family. She didn't tell anyone because it was just supposed to be a secret between them two. And it was kind of like, honestly, I don't blame Tony because Tony was afraid that she wasn't going to come back. And knowing her, yeah, that's totally a thing because she just decides, just, just does whatever. So like, honestly, not that it's not that crazy of him to want. I mean, he even told her, like, I've got a land in Brooklyn, or, like, in Long Island. Do you want to be a part of this? Like, he, he's pretty, like, hey, like, his intentions are clear about what he wants to do, and she agrees with it. So if you're telling someone, like, yes, I want to, like, live with you, I want to be in this house, and in the time period, I don't know. I'm just annoyed. I'm annoyed. Just don't marry him then. Because she even was like, mm, can I just promise? And he's like, well, if you can promise, you can get married. And if she was unsure, then like, then I, I can do it, but I don't know. Maybe it was a time period. I don't. So then, because her shop, the shopkeeper basically threatens to, like, let everyone know her secret, and Isla, she's like, like, you know what? She's like, honestly, I hate this town. Like, she's like, you know what? Like, these people are petty. I have my own life back in the U.S. of A. I'm gonna go. So she tells her mom that she's married, and that she's going to go back to her husband. And her mom is in shock, obviously, because it's like, oh, crap, my daughter's married and never told me. And But, like, her, you know, she's like, let's spend the rest of the night together, Mom. I'm going to go back the next day. She's like, no, I'm going to tell you by now because I can't bear to do it later. Mind you, her mom and her sister were the ones pushing her to go to the U.S., so, like, it's kind of crummy of her mom to be, like, not to think that she was going to have a life over there. Like, that was the plan. Her mom was just a frustrating character for me in general. <laughs> Okay, so lastly, you know, you're thinking, okay, what about the guy? You know, she was in the church thinking, how can I divorce my husband secretly? Is there a way that, like, our marriage didn't count? Yeah. So she decides to leave a note in the boy's mailbox. <laughs> yeah, that's how she breaks up with that. She's like, oh, just leave it in the mailbox. He's going to find it and he's going to be sad. That's what she's like. Yep. Oh, look, I found a quote. You didn't have to marry him. You weren't in trouble, her mother asked. No. And tell me something. If you hadn't married him, would you still be going back? I don't know, Isla said. But you're getting on the train in the morning, her mother said. I am. The train to Rosalind then to cook. now she doesn't know she doesn't know anything she's unsure like I thought by the end of this I thought honestly I thought you know what maybe there will be some redemption maybe she's like you know what I, I did fool around I did mess around with that guy I thought maybe this life would be better that's what I thought he was getting at I thought he was getting at that like you know you're trying to reconcile two parts of yourself when you come back home but you've already changed you're not the same person and I thought she was gonna say something prolific along the lines of like you know what I thought I could be, I thought I could fill into my sister's shoes, I thought I could reconcile my, my new self and the old self together, but when I have an interaction, I realized I can't, I realized that I've grown and this place is no longer for me, my real home is in Brooklyn. Honestly, I would have forgiven everything if, if we would have had like some sort of like self-realization. Everyone makes mistakes, everyone grows, no one is perfect, but to have an ending be like, I have a husband, I think I should go back, but like, I don't know if I'd go back if I wasn't married. 
just like have some backbone, man. Like, make a decision. I'm saying this as someone that also has a hard time making decisions, so I'm not trying to be that, but just like it was unsatisfying. She just was like, Yeah, like I'm gonna be on a boat and I'm gonna be going back to Brooklyn. Like, So unfortunately for me, this one was an absolute loss. Luckily for me, I did not pay full price for this. I actually got it at my um, local friends of the library bookstore, so it was only three dollars. So I didn't lose anything like monetary truly by picking this book up, but I did lose some time. <laughs> I'm a little. Uh, so far, it's definitely one of the worst books of the year for me. I'm really disappointed because. I'm disappointed at myself that I didn't remember the last fourth of the movie because maybe I wouldn't have just picked it up in general. Um, but I just wanted more out of this because I expected a lot due to the film. Um, but I don't want to discourage you from watching the film. I want to make that very clear. I mean, I'm telling you, Oscar nominated film, Oscar nominated for the performance. Um, so it's definitely worth watching, but I just don't think you, you need to read it. I think you need to watch it but not read. So, um... That's my critique. That was my book rant. I'm sorry that I had to drink Powerade and yell. Um, and I don't know how much of this I'm going to edit out because it's a lot. I can already see here. We're already at a we're already at a time. <laughs> so, and my videos are very long, but it is what it is. So, yet again, if you learned, the moral of the story is watch the movie. Okay. Um, Hi, I'm Gabby Gabs, and it was nice to meet you. See you in the next video. Bye.